T-Star is a local space company that came to us with the idea of making space exploration more accessible. And so the way they were going to do that was commercializing low Earth orbit with CubeSats. These are very small satellites to host experiments um, and do remote sensing of the Earth in orbit. And so T-Star is building their own called the T-Sat. Now this T-Sat ideally would be launched from the International Space Station, orbit the Earth, and collect data. Within the TSAT is an existing system called the Modular Integrated Stackable Layers. This is a rack and stack computer system designed by NASA that allows for flexible experiments. You can just put a new layer on there and it'll work. For example, they have a power layer and an intelligence layer. So the power layer powers everything, the intelligence handles all the data. T-Star came to DVT because they need a new layer. They need a communication layer for the TSAT to ensure reliable communication from the TSAT while it's orbiting the Earth down to an Earth station. We designed a new layer for this missile stack called the DVDT COM board. And this will be used to communicate data down to the Earth station from the TSAT. Here's a conceptual block diagram to help you visualize what we are doing. So here's the Earth with the TSAT in low Earth orbit. DVDT headquarters hosts the Earth station that will receive data from the TSAT. Within the TSAT is the missile stack and the missile stack has the power and data bus architecture that our board must integrate with. So here is our board that goes on top of the missile stack to communicate data down to the earth station. Diving deeper into our board, we have the power and data bus connectors. Now this is how our board will be powered through the missile stack and also have access to the MSP430 microcontroller on the intelligence layer. We also have an external power connector in case extra current is needed on our board and this can be voltage regulated to meet the voltage levels for our devices. We have power monitoring on here that can be read through an analog pin into the MSP430 through the data bus and we also have an expansion port for future expandability that connects to the MSP430 with digital analog and serial pins. The most important part of our board is the actual sending out of the data which happens through the CC1120 transceiver. This gets access to the data through SPI into the MSP430. This signal is then modulated to 2GFSK that goes into the CC1190 front end amplifier and this signal gets boosted out through the antenna which then is sent down to the earth station. The earth station was not in the scope of our project but we had to have a mock-up to validate our system works. To help understand the problem and the solution, we had a lot of meetings with our faculty advisor, Mike Willie, and with our customers, uh, Matt Leonard of T-Star and Dr. Morgan. Having these meetings regularly helped us to see what the system is really going to look like. Our hardware needed to fit within a T-Sat, so we needed to be small form factor, as well as abiding by the missile stack power and data bus architecture, which is strictly defined by NASA. The purpose of our design was to develop a long-range wireless communication system. To solve this problem, we decided to use the CC1120 sub 1 GHz wireless transceiver and the CC1190 RF front end to boost our signal and achieve an overall transmit power of a half a watt. The reason we chose these TI parts is because not only do they meet our basic functionality, but they also allowed us to balance the trade-offs of cost, performance, and also support since no one on our team had designed a wireless RF communication system before. In order to create a high quality product for our customer, we utilized other TI parts in addition to our communication system, such as our voltage regulation, our op-amp circuitry, and even our intelligence, which was running our scalable software, which would control the satellite in low Earth orbit. As a TSAT circles the Earth, there's going to be a short time where we can send and receive data to and from the Earth station to the TSAT. So for this reason, being that our system is very time critical, we chose an RTOS implementation for our software. The RTOS that we chose to implement was the TI RTOS because it was readily available for the AMSP430 and had a host of features that allowed us to create tasks and add functionality that could enhance the product and make it the best thing for the customer. Since the scope of our project included the communications board, but not the earth station, we needed an earth station mock-up that we could use to communicate back and forth. To do this, we used the TI RF Studio coupled with the evaluation kit for our chipset that we selected, the CC1120. 
The evaluation kit allowed us to plug in via USB and connect to the evaluation kit with TIRF Studio, set up all the parameters for our transmissions, and then communicate back and forth packets and be able to see these packets, save these packets, and then later on parse these packets and find out what kind of data we were getting back, as well as seeing signal strength and packet error rate. The biggest challenge DVDT faced was that we were designing a system to communicate to low Earth orbit, yet we had no way to put our system into low Earth orbit to actually test that it could communicate at 250 miles. And so we had to use different simulations and different ways here on Earth to prove that our system could ultimately transmit at the distances we wanted it to. There were two different methods that we used to verify our system. The first was a one mile line of sight test at Lake Somerville. This test allowed us to prove one mile line of sight and then with additional attenuation added to our path, we were able to simulate the same types of path losses that would be seen at low Earth orbit. The second was through a high altitude balloon test. This allowed us to test at a 100 mile line of sight distance and also verify that our system could work at extreme temperatures and forces similar to those seen on an orbiting TSAT. The results have shown that using 12.5 kilobits per second will allow us to transmit at distances up to 1,600 kilometers. The results from the high altitude balloon as well as Lake Somerville make DVDT very confident that they'll be able to communicate to low Earth orbit. The field testing was great and we got everything ready to wrap up and deliver this product to T-Star. It was so exciting whenever we got signed off on the project and we gave our finalized product to T-Star and to think that the system we made is going towards this idea of commercializing low Earth orbit with this T-Sat and bringing us all one step closer in discovering the final frontier.